Welcome to the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Overlook. The photograph on the right was the inspiration for this painting. It's a photograph I took after pulling off the road while driving up a mountain in Mount Rainier National Park. When I began my painting, I was planning on doing a composition which filled the entire uh, page. However, partway through my painting process, I decided to make it into a vignette. I begin with a light pencil sketch, and you can see by my sketch that I intended for this composition initially to fill out the entire page. In my sketch, I've drawn the major shapes and, and uh, indicated with a vertical line where some of the trees are going to be. The colors that I use for this painting are cerulean blue, cobalt blue, royal blue, Halloween orange, quinacridone rose, pyrrole red, and sap green. Before I begin to paint, I'm going to turn my board upside down and I'm going to apply a sky wash. And this is going to be a warm wash uh, that's a mixture of cerulean blue and Halloween orange. And uh, I want to maintain uh, a clear, a crisp, clean line on the mountain tops because I want to preserve some of those whites, so I turn it upside down so that gravity pulls my wash away from that edge and it leaves me a nice clean edge. As I said, this is a mixture of cerulean blue and Halloween orange. This, this warm wash has more Halloween orange and now I'm going to take a mixture that has a, a larger proportion of cerulean blue and put a little bit of a cooler tone in there. And uh, I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to do some more work on top of it to start to develop the, the feeling of the clouds. I've thoroughly dried my paper and I've turned my board right side up and I'm going to begin to paint the clouds using a mixture of cobalt blue, cerulean blue, Halloween orange, and a touch of quinacridone rose. Often when we paint clouds we're thinking of something that's in the distance and in the background. However in this uh, subject matter here you have to think a little differently because the mountain is actually in the background and the sky still is behind that but these low-hanging clouds are more uh, in the middle ground. So one of the challenges here is to paint these clouds and make them feel like clouds but make them feel like they're more in the middle ground than in the distance. So one of the ways that this is different is often when you're painting clouds in the background you're painting dark hard edge, dark value hard edge shapes on top. In this situation, you're floating these softer clouds in the middle ground and they're obstructing uh, your view to some of the harder edge shapes that are on the mountain in the background. So here I continue to paint these clouds using the mixtures of cobalt blue, Halloween orange, cerulean blue, and quinacridone rose. And I'm able, using those uh, paint create mixtures that give me both warm and cool tones to, to give the suggestion of these clouds. And these aren't light, white, puffy clouds. These are very dark, kind of low-lying clouds that are coming through the valley here. My initial wash here for the, for the clouds is, uh, was working wet on dry, but as I continue to work with it and add uh, more color, I I'm get to a point where I'm working wet in wet, and it gives me soft edges as I add color to this area. And uh, I'll continue to uh, add some color and uh, soften edges and use a tissue to blot in some areas until I get a, uh, the effect that I'm after here. I've continued to work with this cloud area, uh, darkening the value a little bit till it's a, it's a middle value. And uh, I'm trying to make a, a distinction from what's going on in the, the middle ground here and what's going on in the background with a distant sky. And one of the ways I do this is with the uh, change in value. I've jumped ahead a bit here as I've started to work on the mountaintops and I'm painting the shadowed areas that appear on the tops of these mountains. I'm using a mixture of quinacridone rose and cobalt blue with a little bit of burnt sienna mixed in 
And as I paint the variety of shapes that are created by the, the shadows on the mountain, I try to follow the contour of uh, the mountain itself. I apply these as fairly flat washes, but I also try to uh, give some uh, variation to the color that I'm, that I'm working with. And I also vary the values. As I work towards the left side of this mountain, I'm going to uh, let that uh, color uh, grade, grade eight out to a, a lighter value and a softer edge. And that's actually going to be an area that the uh, trees that are in the foreground are going to cover. So I don't need to bring it all the way down, but I bring it over the line a little bit so that I don't have a hard edge that I'm trying to paint over. As I work towards the right side, I have uh, the, the edge of a, of a hill or a mountain side that is more towards the middle ground. And I'm painting that a very dark value. And as I work with this, I'm going to uh, work on painting the shape, but there's some areas where I'm also going to try and soften the edges so that it gives the suggestion there that that's being uh, absorbed into the clouds there or being covered by the, the clouds, which were at, are ahead of that in the middle ground. I'm going to insert the reference photo in the lower left hand corner. And you can see how uh, I'm trying to capture the feeling that that cloud is closer to you and that mountain's in the distance and you're kind of peeking through the, over the treetops and under the clouds in the distance to see that mountain. And as I paint this, my darkest values are going to be more in the the middle ground and, and the darkest ones will be in the, the foreground. Now I'm going to take a, a darker valued mixture of sap green royal blue with some pyrrole red in it to uh, paint the uh, tops of these trees that are uh, in the valley. And this is all going to kind of come together as one uh, large shape. Uh, all these trees, the tree line and some of the trees that are nearer. And there'll be a slight change in value with the ones that are uh, closest uh, to, to the foreground. Here is, I, I paint this area. I'm going to uh, soften the edges a little bit with uh, the fine mist spray. And as I do this, originally my plan was to paint this uh, as a composition which filled the entire page. But as it's developed and I start to soften these edges, I, I start to uh, think about maybe changing my composition. I like the effect that I'm getting with this tree line and that uh, softening of the edge as it comes towards the foreground. And uh, it's got me thinking that I might like this piece more as a vignette rather than uh, a composition that fills the whole page. Now I'm going to start to define some darker tree shapes along this this area here this line so if you squint this is going to read as a a large shape but um, when you're not squinting you're looking at it there's going to be some subtle value changes value and color changes the particular trees that i'm painting right now are uh, quite a, a dark mixture but it's a cool mixture and it helps it stand out against the, the wash that's a, a very close value, but it's a warmer tone. Yeah, I continue to bring this uh, kind of a dark value, cool tone uh, down. And uh, it's actually go, going over top of a few of these harder edges, and now I'm going to soften those edges 
with a fine mist spray. And this is where I kind of like the effect that I'm getting uh, and, and it makes me uh, want to lean towards a vignette composition instead of uh, the composition that would fill the whole paper. Now I'm going to take a mixture that has a burnt sienna uh, with just a little bit of cobalt blue, not much. Uh, and I'm going to give the indication of a few tree trunks. Here I'm going to take a number one rigger and I'm going to start to uh, paint the tops of these trees that are more in the foreground. And uh, they're very light and airy towards the top and it gets uh, dense as it, as it gets lower on the tree. And you start to get to this mass of trees and it just comes into one large shape. So the, the trees are kind of individual tree tops, and, and, but as you get lower they start to just disappear into one large shape. On the left here, this tree goes up and out of the page on the top, so the brushwork I'm doing here represents the, the, the limbs, the branches that are coming off the side of that tree. Then to the left of this brushwork will be a, more of a solid shape. Here I've painted a number of these treetops. And when you're, you're painting uh, something as repetitious as this, you normally want to have some variation in the width of them, the height of them, the spacing. You don't want them all to be the same. And here I'm painting one that's uh, a little lower, starting to head down the, the mountainside here. And I'll do some of this brushwork over top of that. Uh, lighter green wash that I had put on there earlier and where I'd softened the edges so now I get the, the contrast of this hard edge brushwork over top of that soft wash that I'd put down uh, earlier. Now I've taken a, a larger brush here and uh, it's a large round wash brush and I'm going to start to fill in the the lower areas of these trees so it's uh, it's pretty much one dark shape it's the same value as the the brushwork I was doing on the tops of the trees but I'm going to bring this down into this to this base where all these trees come together and it starts to form one large dark valued shape and as I bring this wash down I'm going to get to a point here because I'm, uh, I'm going to try and make this a vignette I'm going to soften the edges on this Here I have most of this shape blocked in now and uh, I've reached a point where I'm going to soften these edges so I'm going to use a fine mist spray bottle and I'm going to soften those edges and let that color diffuse down into the white paper below this area and I'm going to try and uh, maintain that look, this kind of a vignette look. I'll pick up some of the excess moisture in my page and uh, I'll hit that again with a spray bottle just to try and get a nice soft edge that I'm uh, pleased with. And uh, But in the end I'm going to, to maintain that kind of unfinished look and, and make this a vignette so you're you're kind of coming in, you're looking over the treetops, under the clouds, the distant mountains, and uh, there's not a lot of busy uh, things going on in the foreground, which originally I was intended to put some more trees in there and some ground cover and some grass, but I kind of like the vignette approach. Here I'm taking, uh, again, some more of this dark value. This is the sap green, royal blue, and pyrrole red. And I'm just making an indication of a couple trees here on the right side. So I'm using a quill brush that I like. Uh, has a nice uh, sharp point on it. And I'm just going to give the indication of these trees 
and let them kind of disappear into that dark valued shape. Here as I, I finish up the base of this you can see it's a bit of a darker value and I again I want to soften those edges I don't want a hard edge there on the bottom of that so I want that just to kind of um, fade into the, the shapes and the tones that I've already laid down. Here I'm going to put down some uh, a bit of a warmer green and I'm going to spray it with a spray bottle just to give a bit of a warmer uh, accent to what I already have going on there. So just touching it with some paint and then softening it with a, a spray bottle to help diffuse that color. And I'm going to bring that along the base of this just as I said to give it a little bit of a warm accent. I'm going to add to that just a little bit more and, and make a, a slightly larger shape here of that tone. I'm going to soften that up and let it diffuse down into the white of the paper. Now I've thoroughly dried my paper. I'm going to take a kneaded eraser and I'm going to pick up some of those pencil marks that I had sketched at the beginning of my process because initially I had planned on doing more in the foreground there because I was going to have a composition that filled out the page but now I want to erase those pencil lines. I'm going to put a white mat on this to get a good look at it and that's my painting overlook. I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't already be sure to check out Rick Sorot's watercolor friends and subscribers on Facebook and if you ever have questions about my materials, you can always go to the studio page of my website, rserwitzart.com. And if you have questions, you can email me at contactrserwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.